Uh, my prayer, and, and I need it tonight, and I told Brother Durr when he got here, I, I need to, <clears throat> I desire to feel his spirit. And uh, uh, there's nothing like a touch of the Lord. Doesn't matter what you're going through in life. No matter how down you may be, no matter how stressed you may be, no matter the things that's going on, no matter how sick you may be, a touch from God, well, it's a touch from God. And unless you felt it, it's, it can never be told how good it feels. But Brother Darley, it, it just erases everything. It's like walking into a dark room and flipping the light on. And the darkness flees away. And there's been times that I've been consumed. There's been times that stress may, may be around. There's been times that we've had sickness in our families and been times that we've had heartaches and but you know what one touch from the lord and it just melts away so that that's that's my question i guess today and and what was on my mind and and i'll try to maybe talk just for a little bit and see which way god may lead me is is uh is your mind you know is uh what are you trusting in what are you seeking for? What are you trying to do in life? And what is your purpose? And, and I see a lot of people, Brother Darrell, and they'll, they'll try a lot of things, and they'll, they'll work hard, and they, they want to build up this or build up that. And kind of like the, the man you talked about that had, wanted to build bigger barns, and that was kind of what he thought he, would need, he needed to do. And his purpose was there, and it was all that he gained wasn't enough that he had even more coming in, and he wanted more, and he built bigger barns. But that... What happened to all that stuff? What happened to everything? His mind was consumed with that, wasn't it? And, and, and we read about where Christ had come into a, a, a shore here, and, and as he was walking along, he met a man there, and a man who was locked up amongst the tombs, who was chained there. And, and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the Bible talks about how that he had demons and, and began to ask him, uh, uh, who are you? And he said, what is your name? And, his, and, 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 and they replied, he said, my name is Legion, for I am many. And this guy had, this guy had demons. He had devils inside of him. And, and it was ruled by those devils, Brother Darrell. And, and he wasn't in his right mind, was he? Uh, uh, so, whatever, what, so this is kind of what was on my mind. And, and hopefully God would lead me uh, uh, into something that may help somebody. Uh, pray for me, if you will. Uh, uh, and and see, he wasn't in his right mind because uh, uh, all that he tried to do, uh, 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 the world didn't want him, did they? Uh, 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 so, so he couldn't fit into society uh, his mind wasn't right uh, and the things that he tried to do and accomplish probably wasn't good uh, a matter of fact he probably tried to hurt people wouldn't he uh, and try to hurt himself and they chained him uh, away from the city out amongst the tombs uh, and he sat there uh, and would just break those chains uh, and he was naked uh, wasn't even clothed was he uh, why? so his mind wasn't right uh, and when we see a lot of that in the world today uh, they may not see that like they uh, uh, or I may, may say, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not controlled by demons. You ever talk to somebody like that? When I was young and uh, first coming into church, uh, and I remember uh, uh, probably 13 or 14 years old, uh, and I was sitting back there, and I'd heard the preacher say, if you're not following the Lord, then you're following the devil. If you're not led by the Lord, then you're being led and controlled by the devil. That bothered me. That bothered me because I sat back there and I said, well, that guy don't even know me. How can he sit there and say that I'm being controlled by the devil? How can he sit there and say that I, uh, uh, my love is what the devil loves? Uh, the, the, the devil has control of my mind. Uh, uh, and that, bothered, that hurt my feelings is what it did. Uh, it it kind of, it, 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 was, it was tough to hear. Uh, uh, and, I, and I said, no, that, there's no way. Uh, you could not have proved to me uh, uh, at that time uh, uh, that I was following the way of the devil. Uh, 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 but uh, the truth is you've got one master. Uh, uh, you can't serve one. One and love the other. You're either going to love one and hate the other. My question today, is it Jesus Christ? Is that your love? Is that who you're following? Have you been born again? Has your name been written in the Lamb's book of life? Are you being led of the Lord? Is your footsteps ordered of Him? Is He the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path? Is He controlling you? Is that 
that is Jesus, the strong man that is controlling you, who has set you free and ordering your footsteps. Because if it's not, I've got some news for you. It might not sit well with you. It might not sound good. It might not tickle. But guess what? If it's not Jesus Christ, then you are of your father, the devil. That's what the Bible teaches. You're of your father, the devil. The God of this world, the devil himself, is controlling you. Boy, that hurt me. That got me thinking. And I lay on my bed night after night after night trying to understand why somebody would tell me or say it to a crowd of people. He wasn't exactly telling it to me, Brother Darrell. But I heard it as if he told it right to me. You ever, you ever, you ever been there? Brother Stephen, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? You have a house full of people. And their preacher be preaching up a storm and you'll catch a little bit here or there then all of a sudden something will just smack you right across the face. And you'll be like, why did he just say that to me? He don't know me. That's what I said in my, in my mind. I was like, he don't know me. He cannot tell me that I'm following the devil. I was raised in church. I, I sit on a church pew with all my family uh, 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 from, from just a baby uh, uh, and, and raised up in church to understand who God was. But you know what? I hadn't been born again. Sin had found me out and hell was going to be my home. The truth hurt. The truth hurt. And, 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 and that's the way the Lord, the Lord works personal. Like he blessed that preacher to stand up and to preach the gospel. Let me get my handkerchief, Brother Harry, because you'll tell me I'm spitting. You tell me I'm spitting all over the place. And I don't want, I don't want to do that. We, we in a time right now that where spittle's not a good thing. Even if it's blessed spittle, it's not going to be good. So, so we'll try to keep that to a minimum. But you know it's hard not to get excited because we're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about the one who came and died for the world, the sin of the world. We're talking about the one who rose and conquered death, hell, and the grave. We're talking about the one, Brother Darrell, who sat on the right hand of the Father, even now making intercession for you and me. The one who saved my soul. Yeah, I'm going to get excited about it. I can't help it. Like fire shut up in my bones. But God will work on every hand and he, and he allowed me to hear what I needed to hear. It cut me. But there was a purpose in that. My mind wasn't right. My mind wasn't right. My mind was thinking of things. Why? Because the, the, the Bible talks about how that the God of this world will blind the eyes or the mind of the people of this world. I wonder if that man who thought he had all them things, uh, well, maybe let's look, at, let's look at King Agrippa. King Agrippa heard the gospel preached by Paul. He, he expounded all that unto him. And King Agrippa, he had, he had opportunity, I would like to say, opportunity to, to believe in Jesus Christ, to surrender all unto him and to trust him and to pick up the cross and follow him. And he made a choice. I believe that he was blinded. And he's seen his riches. He's seen his seat. He's seen his power. Probably thought maybe that I don't have to give up all this and maybe do this and do that, but no, he made a choice. But no matter, this is what I like to look at it, no matter how strong the devil thinks he is, no matter how much that the Bible talks about how that they blinded, he blinded the eyes of those who do not believe, no matter how strong that the devil thinks he is, no matter what he puts in front of somebody, he's not stronger than God, no matter how powerful he thinks he may be, he will not stop the gospel from going out, he will not stop the light shining unto a sinner. He's not that strong, Brother Darrell. For if God has a purpose for a gospel to be preached and, and to somebody, they will hear. No matter the state of that person, they will hear. This man, who the Bible talks about, his name was Legion, had devils in him. Did that stop him from talking to Christ? Did that stop him or hinder him from being healed? No, the devils knew who he was. 
said, have you come to torment us before our time? They knew who Jesus was, and they know that he had all power in heaven and in earth. Well, guess what? He cast him out of that man, he clothed that man, and he put him in his right mind. Praise the name of the Lord. I thought I understood some things. I thought that Matt preacher didn't know what he's talking about, Brother Darrell, when he said that, that if you're not following the Lord, you're following the devil. I said, no, you're not talking about me because you don't know me. I wasn't in my right mind. Well, I've got some news for you. The Lord come by my way and he drawed me and the light shined unto me. I surrendered unto him, Brother Darrell. And guess what? He put me in my right mind and now I understand Amen. that I was following the devil because I would surrender to Jesus Christ. It's either one or the other. Which one today are you following? Who are you looking to? Who are you trusting? And especially in a time as this, in a time where turmoil is everywhere, where chaos, uh, uh, where war could break out any minute, uh, where things we just don't know, Brother Darrell, about tomorrow. But guess what? I'm in my right mind, and my right mind tells me I don't care about tomorrow because my King, my Savior, He already knows what's going on. And He has all power. I'm satisfied, Brother Darrell, in Him because His grace is sufficient for me. Are you satisfied today? Are you in your right mind? I hope that you've heard something that touches your heart. I hope that maybe if it cut, I pray that it cut. Because it's not me that can do the cutting. Brother Darrell, it's not you that can do the cutting. But if God will bless and the gospel goes out, the truth, it'll hurt. Oh, but it'll set you free. And who is truth? Who is truth? Jesus, Jesus Christ is truth. Pilate asked that question. Yeah. What, is what is truth? He stood right before him. And he didn't see it. Tried to wash his hands. His blood's not on my hands. Didn't matter. He couldn't clean himself. Jesus Christ, he cleaned me. It's not what I did. It's not what I could work out. It's not what I can attempt to do because my mind was not right. What my mind would say, what my heart would say, wasn't the mind of God. But when I surrendered my mind and my heart to him, he bore me again. He clothed me. He put me in my right mind. So I'm going to ask you today, who are you following? Who are you trusting in? God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who loved you so much that he sent his son, his son, to die for you. For you trust the devil, who's a liar, the father of it, who hates God, who'd rather... See you beside him in hell. Which one? The prophets of Baal, didn't they not cry out? Fell on the altar, cut themselves. But their God could not hear. Their God could not see. Their God wasn't touched by their infirmities. Their God was not a God. It was a made-up God, a false God, no life. But their, our God is real. Our God is the creator. Our God is a loving God. Our God is a merciful God. Our God loves us that he gave his son. Our God made a way for us when sin separated us. Our God made a way, Brother Darrell, for us to be nigh unto him. Our God made a place for us in heaven. And guess what? We're going there one day. That's the God that I love. That's the God that I serve. The one who hears me when I pray. His eyes are upon us and his ears are open. 
under our cries. Give me a God that hears me, Brother Darrell. I don't always, I'm not always obedient. When I'm not, he'll reach out and grab me. He'll let me know. He'll chastise me. His love is good. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. When it gets heavy, it's because I make it heavy. But when I surrender it all to him, guess what? A peace. It surpasses all understanding. Give me Jesus. That's what I want. The devil, he's a liar. He'll tell you you're nothing. He'll tell you don't go to church. He'll tell you the virus will get you. You can go to Walmart, but don't go here. The devil's a liar. He'll tell you there's no hope in him. But God is standing with outstretched arms saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am me and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Guess what? I'm tired, and I didn't know if I could preach tonight. But brother, now guess what? I've got rest in my soul. I'm in communion with God. Thank you, Jesus. He knows what we need. Why? Because I'm in my right mind when the mind of Christ is in me. Praise His name today. Which one are you following today? Who are you looking to? The choice is yours. God made a way. And that choice is yours. Who are you going to follow? Because He will clothe you. And He'll put you in your right mind. God loves you. And we're going to celebrate here after a while. Brother Darrell, Christmas. The time that we set aside for the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to do something. Anybody watching, if there's two or three or whoever. Brother Darrell, we got to do something. We don't need to be ashamed of the Lord. Uh, when Christmas comes and we gather around, uh, uh, let's get upon our knees uh, uh, and let's pray unto God. Uh, uh, let's look. Uh, let's explain to our children uh, uh, what it is. It's not the gifts, uh, uh, but it's the gift of God. Uh, that's what we need to celebrate. Let's understand what it is. Let's look up for where our help comes from. And I want to say that, Brother Darrell, if the church doors... They're open. I'm not going to say if. But the church doors are open. If there be anybody who feels that the Lord has heard their cries. If there be anybody who feels that they made a choice and feel that God has saved their soul. And you want to make this church your home? Then guess what? The doors of the church are open. Amen. Let us know. You can call me. You can post it. You can message. I don't care how you get a hold of me. But get a hold of me. That's right. I want to say this one thing. I know I don't want to stay too long. Listen. People say it's too dangerous. It is dangerous. The virus, is it real? Yeah, yeah, it is real. It is real. Do we take a risk to come? I believe so. We take precautions. We wear masks. Sanitizer, we've got it here. We've got a cleaner in our air conditioning units that cleans the air. Costs a little bit, but it's worth it. Amen. We take Excuse me, we take all precautions that we know. So we do take a little bit of a risk. But we're here because we love you. Mm -hmm. We're here because we love God. Amen. <clears throat> somebody said we shouldn't have, shouldn't have opened up. We shouldn't have opened up. Well, I'm not going to get into that. But we've seen 10 or more mm -hmm. already. Some in the church here. Some in some of our sister churches. Some out of state that if they'd been here, they wanted to be here. But we helped them and we prayed for them. And they told us that God, had, they felt God had led them yeah. to some of these videos with this preaching. We're not going to say it was this or it was that. It's God. God knows what's needed. Let's put it in his hands. Amen. And if we'd stop, Brother Darrell, if we, <clears throat> if we didn't start... Would those ten have come? Mm -hmm. If one would have come, it had been worth it. Amen. So, I'm going to follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. Take all the precautions I can. I don't want to tempt the Lord. 
But I also know God has all power. Yeah. And we need to be obedient. Let's stand up and be about the Father's business. Yeah.